degreed accountant and uh, spent a lot of time with ERP back office solutions and certainly um, got very excited about customer relationship management and did a lot of consulting with businesses throughout my career. So this is just, um, I noticed this trend that was happening that the customer experience had changed and that in that companies that were very, very strong about aligning their sales and their marketing capabilities were performing so much better. And uh, as a customer, I used Acton. So it was very natural in my career journey to come to work for the company that had the technology that solved our business problems. Fantastic. And I think we have a few more, more registrants um, here today on this webinar. So, uh, so no pressure here, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, thanks again um, to the audience because uh, we know your day is busy and that um, there's often very little time to learn about new technology trends, but we're excited today to really talk about the need for marketing automation. I think it's sometimes understood. A very big driver for marketing automation has been the buyers themselves. Uh, our buyer's journey has changed in the last 10 years significantly. 78% of all buyers start with their own research. They've narrowed down the vendor before they even contact you, and they're not expecting the salesperson to educate them as they did in the past. Instead, marketing plays a pivotal role in interacting with them while they're doing their research. And those top performing companies that I was talking about, those that beat revenue targets and have 90% retention rates, they are marketing differently. They think of the entire customer journey as a life cycle, not just leads to sales, but they use metrics heavily to guide all their decisions. And they use advanced techniques like segmentation of their buyers and personalization to make sure that they're engaging with their prospective customers and their existing customers. These top performers are also using marketing automation to drive results and outgrow their competition. And I believe it's a lot to do with sales and marketing alignment in an organization. Gone are the days when you can have very siloed departments that don't talk to each other. It is about collaboration and really understanding what your buyers and your customers are telling you. So here at Acton, we believe that it is, again, not just the inbound site. You've invested in your website. That's fantastic. But it is throughout their cycle, and that includes not only you know, demand generation, but also uh, listening and engaging with your customers that turns them into advocates. You know, sales is typically on to their next business opportunity once the sale is complete. But very sophisticated companies increasingly realize the value that their customer base provides, and they remain aligned to those customers so that you have a better understanding of why you've been successful in the past and how you will be successful moving forward. So today we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about how the marketing automation journey has changed. You know, what, what is it? How do we define it? And then how marketing automation provides value and boosts your top line revenue and then why a business would need marketing automation. So let's start with that very basic definition of what marketing automation is. So it's really consolidating all of your online marketing efforts so that you have multiple channels, whether it's social or it's your web page or it's lead capture or trade shows and really making marketing automation the platform underneath that. And of course, the tight integration to Sugar or your CRM platform is very, very key because again, we go back to sales and marketing being aligned on what the customer needs and wants. 
So I believe there's even a, a little bit more basic definition of what marketing automation is, and that's supplying the right audience with the right message at the right time. The classic example of this is Amazon. They surface information designed to appeal to you based on your purchase, previous purchase history, and they do it when you're ready to purchase again, which is you know, a brilliant business model and one that companies can adopt as their own philosophy and business strategy. So we look at all of those marketing automation channels. Um, we believe at ActOn that marketing must encompass both the inbound side and the outbound communication, that it's very important, as we said, to be aligned to your sales organization. And we believe a key component of that is understanding your customers. So list management, identifying your targeted audience, both prospects and your customers in that list, and that we can further segment those lists into natural messaging that appeals to where they are at in their buyer journey. So some examples that we've seen as best practices here at Acton and certainly um, with Sugabytes clients is companies that are really focused on their ability to wake up the inactive leads to really engage with buyers um, that everyone within the company is on the same page on the relevant messages to your buyer during their during their research and again paying really close attention to your existing customers in terms of your ability to upsell cross sell and cycle based sell across their journey so that you're staying in touch for higher retention, but you're also listening to what is important to that buyer. So a clear focus on your buyer is throughout this journey. One of the things I, I like to say is what marketing automation is not. So I think it feels sometimes to companies that we talk to, like having a beacon on your website that's going to track that anonymous visitor until it becomes a known visitor seems very impersonal, but it's actually just the opposite. It's not spamming if you're sending information that is both personalized to the needs of the buyer, and it also makes it very targeted to where they're at in their journey. So if you collect data via a form on your website, for example, you can custom tailor what's resonating so that it's very relevant to your buyer and it's really timely to their, their needs and their wants. So one of the things is that <laughs> the, the statistics are clear, right? Marketing automation boosts business results. That lead to revenue cycle is very, very important, and sales and marketing collaboration typically leads to a much higher um, performance of top-line revenue. So marketing automation is at the center of that. I recently did a live event with one of our partners, and in the audience there were six companies that said they had very high degree of collaboration, and very interestingly, all six were using marketing automation. So definitely a different uh, focus on the business and certainly they've made their business case for how marketing automation can grow the business. So let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into that concept. So these statistics are very powerful. The role of marketing has very much evolved uh, in the last 10 years and marketers are looking for solutions that deliver a return on their marketing investment. They focus on key performance indicators that highlight marketing's contribution to revenue. For example, it's a very close look today at how social as a channel is driving your brand. And marketing automation allows you to put metrics against those channels 
to understand if Twitter is performing much higher for you than LinkedIn or Facebook. And those, again, um, really help marketing build the case for their revenue contribution. We believe that marketing should really lead the buyer and customer journey. So it's a unified approach as we discuss, going beyond lit, you know, lead to revenue. It's just one and done for sales. And then it can't be what we call spray and pray marketing, which is where you're just pushing out messages and spamming people of where they feel that the, it's not tailored to their needs or their requirements of their business. But that it works better when you break down the, the silos in a typical business, right? Whether it's sales or service or marketing, it's really orchestrating the collaboration between those groups. And if you take a unified approach to the entire buyer's journey, then you will be able over time to have in some very strong data that helps you make future decision. So if you break down those barriers between front office and back office functions, then it, you can be very focused on what's, you know, very personalized communications and really understand the customer better. And then make sure that marketing automation is available not just in an outside solution, but integrated into the systems that you use every day, like sugar, so that your salespeople and your marketing people are having very rich conversations with their prospects and their customers. So some of the things we see companies focused on is really what, what do we know about our customer? Know thy client. Who is the most engaged? Where are they at in their buyer's journey? What offer do I send? What leads are qualified? Can we agree on the score of that digital behavior? And then what content and campaigns are working for us? What is resonating with our buyers? What offers and, and segments are generating the most money for the, for the business? Because really, top performers market different than other companies. They are really focused on, as we discussed, the entire journey and those important metrics to make future decisions on their spend. And then also really focused on knowing their customer through segmentation of their base and understanding the personalized message that's going to appeal to them. And top performers are using marketing automation because it, to scale with marketing, you need a solution that has an aut uh, automated programs that can build progress. So marketers are generating a hot prospect that will appear for salespeople and make them more productive to spend time on their best prospects. And top performers using marketing automation are typically outgrowing their top line revenue over other companies. So why, why does a typical company need marketing automation? Is marketing still relevant at your company? Consider that the marketing team is the steward of your brand, the most important asset of your company. And really, brand is a collection of all the customer touch points that you've heard from them. And we see today that many marketers are still only focused on demand gen, one aspect of the customer life cycle, even as more and more brand building is shifting to that post-purchase communication. And that customer success and that focused on once they've bought is really, really critical. So, you know, definitely demand generation is an important aspect, right? It's, it's very important to have a, a pipeline and a revenue commit and that strategic alignment with sales. But customer success also owns, you know, customer relationship, whether that's account management and their ability to listen to what customers are saying is very, very key. There's a lot of start marketing automation solutions out there, and there's certainly you know 
good in their in their journey, but be be on the lookout for marketing automation systems that will be a solution for the entire life cycle of your customer. So one of the things that we like to talk about at Sugabyte and at Acton is how we help marketers do the best work of their careers. And that's a really designing a single platform that manages the three pillars that are key here. Your brand, the demand, and then expand of your brand. And it's a more scalable way, as I said. I know when I started in the business in sales, uh, selling front office solution, I did a, a lot of business after hour events. I shook a lot of hands. I relied on my network, and I did a lot of the heavy lifting. But as my career evolved, I was increasingly reliant on marketing to help me be productive and to scale. Many customers today have to scale globally, and there's just not enough time in the salesman's day to do cold calling, dialing, that you need to spend your time on the opportunities that yield the best results. And then finally, that focus really around turning your existing customers into brand advocates, that they will help you position your brand with future customers, and that drives word of mouth um, and great referral type of sales activity. So I talked about Amazon as an example, but really we also think that there is less attention and there should be more attention around business to business marketing. B2B marketing has certainly borrowed some of the best practices from B2C, yet B2B is fundamentally different. You're in the B2B world, of course, your customers are companies, and there are typically many contacts and titles involved in the decision. And so we need to market to the business to business landscape. So you know, the best, we talked about the right audience at the right time. I think no one would suspect that we want to send the same information to a CFO that we'd want to send to a CMO. So not only are the business influencers and decision makers in an organization important, but so is your messaging to that audience. You know, everybody in the company should be talking at the account level in that case and the customer success team is focused on the success of a company, not an individual. And in those models, inbound's just not enough. Eventually, you'll, just, you'll reach diminishing returns if you haven't already. So if your focus is just on inbound, you're missing what your existing customers are saying and what account-based marketing can yield to your organizations. So fundamental strategies are typically changing, right, how we think about B2B marketing. So let's look at some of those differences. Um, we talked about business to consumer, and certainly that marketing is different, but one of the things that we believe fundamentally is that marketing to business is not, again, about that individual contact. It's about the company. So you're spear phishing instead of sending out random messaging hoping that they land. You're very targeted in your messaging and inbound marketing again is not enough. So you need to target your message to the company but it has very targeted message to each of the buyers, the influencers, and the eventual end users of what you're selling. So that's just a quick overview, James, of the journey that we see for marketing automation and how it's changed. I wanted to kind of just spend the um, next couple minutes fielding some questions from the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So use this uh, opportunity to um, type in any questions that you have about today's webinar. Um, you can use the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, We've got a couple of questions coming already. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it a couple of minutes for some more to come in. Um, absolutely fantastic um, uh, 
set of slides and information there, Brenda. Um, I particularly liked um, hearing about uh, the Amazon piece. And that reminded me of um, something that happened to me only on Sunday. Um, I'm, I'm currently building a, a high-powered gaming machine um, so that we can experience some, some virtual reality days at Sugarbyte. And uh, I was on the ebuyer.com website. I should, I should get paid for plugging their business. Uh, but I, was on the, <laughs> I was on their website, and I was browsing through some graphics cards um, to build for this for this machine and um, had a browse, went over to an, uh, another website. And later on in that afternoon on Sunday, um, I received an email from eBuyer um, detailing some special offers on graphics cards. And it was like um, I didn't log into eBuyer or anything. I just I was just on their website just looking. And it was like, how did they know? And uh, they had some great offers. I didn't actually end up buying anything on Sunday, but uh, I thought that was a, a classic example of, uh, of a business leveraging the latest in marketing automation technology to, um, to grow and drive new business. James, that's a great story because was their offer timely? Yeah, of course. You had yep. expressed interest and you were in the market. And of course that's when <laughs> that's when those offers are the most relevant. So yeah. absolutely a good uh, good example. I I really believe marketing automation is a fundamental pillar in the customer's experience. We've all had bad ones, right? Where you just really felt like you were a number. Uh, you go to your bank and you're wait in line and, yeah. and there is no, it doesn't feel personalized. And then contrast that with a company that understands that you've bought from them before, that you've spent a lot of your money, and it makes yes. all the difference in the world. Yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look at a couple of, of the questions that have come in. Um, got a couple of people asking about the solution and, uh, and the pricing and how much does it cost? Um, this is something that we're going to be addressing. This is a three-part series. So part two is, is going to be focusing more on the solution that we are offering. This is the Acton uh, Software Marketing Automation Solution. And that will be diving deeper into, into what this solution can offer your business. Uh, so there will be a, a, an excellent chance to learn more about um, the application and, and the solution in general. Part three is going to be focusing on how companies are leveraging Acton or marketing automation in general together with a CRM system uh, and, and the power of combining those two solutions together. Um, so I think um, what I'd probably like to do is follow up individually um, on, on questions about pricing and, and the solution itself. Um, uh, someone else here is saying, how do I get started? Um, again, um, I'll follow up um, individually um, with those questions on how to get started. Um, <clears throat> but actually, just on that point in general, if, if anyone is interested in having uh, a personal one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation uh, about how to get started, um, you know, we will we will make an assessment uh, and and talk about some of your requirements and and what's important for you. Um, uh, I'll leave the yeah. questions open uh, just a couple more minutes. I was just going to uh, add on to that. I know a lot of customers say, where do we get started? Um, certainly, acton.com, our website, uh, is a good place to find out you know, how to build a business case for marketing automation. There's some information, but I really encourage you to start with Sugarbyte. It's partly because they have a lot of experience assessing, you know, where the pain points uh, in your business process are. Because it could be that you have a marketing issue or you could have a sales issue and, and really their experience is going to be valuable in assessing, you know, where do we start? That's what happens to a lot of customers. Um, they know they have a problem, but they just 
are not sure where to start and to um, do that assessment of the gaps that they have in their technology. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so um, I think we are just about ready to, uh, to wrap up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we do have part two of this webinar series uh, running on Tuesday, the 29th of November. So I'll send out some invites and reminders to you um, to join that, uh, that session. That'll be very, very interesting, taking a detailed look at the solution and uh, what it can do. Um, I'd like to thank you, Brenda, for, um, for hosting this webinar. Um, fantastic job. Great information. Thanks so much, James. Appreciate the opportunity. Super. Okay, have a great day, everyone, and uh, we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you.